Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from gun, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One king, one your huskies. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush with Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Picture yourself blazing a trail across the windswept, snow-covered Great Northwest. Yes, like Sergeant Preston. Well, sir, you'd appreciate that real stamina calls for a nourishing breakfast. So fortify yourself every morning with a breakfast that includes a heaping bowlful of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice with milk or cream and fruit. Remember, wheat or rice shot from guns gives you added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. And delicious, taste them. You just can't beat Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Sergeant Preston heard the shooting in the woods to the right of the trail and turned off at once. Seeking! A few minutes later, on the edge of a clearing, he saw a man crouched behind a tree, and he recognized him. It was Barry Ellis, the owner of the Beaver City Inn. There was a cabin in the clearing. As the sergeant stopped the team... Halting! The barrel of a rifle showed at the cabin window, and a bullet nicked the tree behind which Barry had taken cover. What's up, Barry? One of the men who held up the bank last week. Huh? He showed up in town this afternoon. The teller saw him buying supplies. He got away, but we followed him here. The clearing surrounded? Yes, he can't get away. I think he's wounded. Hold your fire! Listen. I'm coming out with my hands up. Hold your fire! I'll take charge, Barry. The sergeant walked into the clearing as the door of the cabin opened and a man came out. His hands were held high above his head. He walked toward the sergeant. The men from the town left the cover of the trees and closed in on him. You can drop your hands. What's your name? Chick Colby. Where's the teller? Right here, Sergeant. You sure this is one of the men who held up the bank? Sure. He was wearing a bandana then, and a different parka, but I recognize him. Where's the money? Uh, I don't know. He's badly wounded. You better give him first aid before we try to question him. Oh, wait. I'm done for. But there's something I want to say. There's a boy in that cabin. My young brother, Tad. He's only... only ten. He didn't have anything to do with the robbery. He didn't know anything about it. He... Oh, Here, Barry, help me. I've got him, Sergeant. Colby dropped to the ground. The sergeant bandaged his wound, and then he was placed on the sergeant's sled. Young Tad walked beside the sergeant as the whole party returned to town. The boy spoke to no one, and the set of his jaw was defiant, but there was a deep misery in his eyes. No tears, though, not even later in the evening when the sergeant had to tell him his brother had died. I'm sorry, Tad. Are you? Well, not so much for Chick. He knew the chances he was taking. I'm sorry for you. Do you have any family? Chick was my family. Any friends? No, but you don't have to worry about me. I can take care of myself. You have no money, no place to live. I can find a place. Well, perhaps I can help you. Do you like dogs? I don't like your dogs. Not even King here? No. Why not? For the same reason I don't like you. Because you work for the police. You killed my brother. That isn't true, Ted. Let's leave me and King out of this. 
As long as they don't work for the police, you do like dogs. Sure, I do. Well, I have a friend who trains them in Dawson. He could use a helper. Would you like to live at his place and work for him? I don't know anything about training dogs. You could learn. I don't need any help from anybody. It was only a suggestion, son. Does this man work for the police? No, we buy some dogs from him, but he's in business for himself. His name's Tom Gray. Suppose you come back to Dawson and have a talk with him. Do I have to? No, perhaps you'd rather stay here. Ellis might give you a job. Stay here in this town where Chick was murdered? Well. All right, I'll go with you. But I won't promise anything. There's no reason why you should until you and Tom have had a talk. Your brother will be buried tomorrow morning. We'll leave right after the funeral. Can I be alone now? Of course, son. Good night. Come on, Jim. <laughs> Tad went back to Dawson with the sergeant, and it was arranged for him to stay with Tom Gray and help around the kennels. The sergeant and King left on another patrol. When they returned, the sergeant stopped at Gray's to see how the boy was making out. I don't know what to say, really. He's looking much better, eating well. He likes the dogs. They like him, too. Well, it's different with me. He's too polite. He always calls me sir. <laughs> Naturally, after what he's been through, you'd expect him to be reserved, but there's something else. I have a feeling he's waiting for something to happen. Then he isn't accepting this as his home. Far from it. He makes it clear that he's only working here. I feel sorry for him, Sergeant. So young, all alone in the world, and still too proud to accept friendship. I hope he's all alone in the world. What? You told me he was. No family, no friends. That's what he told me, but his brother had friends. The men who helped him rob the Beaver City Bank. I'm sure Tad doesn't know where they are right now. If he did, he might not stay here a minute. You found no trace of them? Not yet. But every Northwest Mounted Post in the Territory has their descriptions. I don't believe they've left the Yukon. Why not? Well, mainly because Chick Colby came back to Beaver City. I don't follow you. Why was he there? He went into the town because he needed food, but why was he anywhere near the place? They had a hard time making their escape after the robbery. They may have hidden the money somewhere and split up. That's my theory, anyway. That's why we have Jim Downey on duty there all the time now. Well, I have some reports to write up. Uh, don't you want to see the boy? Oh, I saw him out and back. I don't think he wants to see me, Tom. I belong to the force. Well, uh, have a cup of coffee before you leave. All right. Don't mind if I do. It's on the stove. Won't take a minute. Outside, a strange duel was beginning. King had trotted around to the kennels to say hello to his friends. And when he saw Tad, he ran toward him, wagged his tail, and barked his recognition. Get away from me. The boy reached down and picked up a rock. He made a threatening gesture at the dog, and King backed away about ten feet. But he was still wagging his tail. What are you wagging your tail for? Are you so dumb you can't understand? You belong to the sergeant. You're just as much of a redcoat as he is, and I hate you all. You killed my brother. Chick was a wonderful guy, and no matter what they say about him, nothing can change that for me. Get out of here. Get out. But King did not move. The boy's words were bitter. The tone was full of hatred. Still, King paid no attention to them. He was looking at the boy's eyes. They were neither bad nor mean. They were sad, and King whimpered in sympathy with a deep hurt he could read there. He wanted to comfort this boy, this boy that he liked. He wanted to play with him and make him forget his troubles. Why are you staring at me like that? Stop it and stop wagging your tail. I hate you. Oh, what news? You're just too dumb to understand anything. The boy continued with his work, and King crouched in the snow watching him. And every time Tad looked in his direction, he would wag his tail. The boy would turn away instantly, but King stayed there until the sergeant called him. King! boy watched him run around the corner of the house. You, you think everybody ought to like you. Well, I won't, see? I won't be friends with you. I won't. During the next week, King and Tad met often on the main street of Dawson, and their attitudes remained the same. King friendly, Tad scornful. 
Once, as Tad was walking along the street, he saw King following him. He picked up a stick and threw it at the dog, but much too high to hit him. King, however, leaped in the air and caught the stick in his mouth. And the boy, surprised by the skill and grace of the movement, laughed out loud. King ran up with the stick and laid it at the boy's feet. Instantly, Tad's face changed. I knew you were dumb. I try to hit you and you think I'm playing. Well, I don't play with any dog that belongs to the Northwest Mountain. The boy started for Gray's cabin. He walked half a block and then looked back. King hadn't moved. When he saw Tad's face, he wagged his tail furiously. Tad turned his eyes to the front at once. But he did not try to control his lips when they broke into a smile. He isn't such a bad dog. Just too bad he belongs to a red coat. It was at the end of that week that a rather young man climbed up a wooded draw in the hills back of Dawson to a tumble-down shack. Inside the shack, Bull Lamont lay stretched out on a cot. The canvas sagged under his tremendous weight. As the door opened, he sprang to his feet quick as a cat. Oh, it's you. You get the supplies? All I could buy. Here. Flour, bacon, beans? Yeah, but not much. Everything's too expensive. Enough for about three days. I know. But I got good news. I found the kid. What kid? Chick's young brother. What of it? He's not going to get any more food from us now that his brother's dead. He's working for a dog trainer in Dawson. What about it? I still think I'm right. The police haven't found the money. We know that. When we split up outside of Beaver we City... We never let Chick hide the dough. You were in favor of it at the time, and I know why. You didn't want to be caught with it. Listen, bud, I'm going to break every bone in your body all if you right, say it. All right, all right. Doesn't matter. That's all over. But Chick did take the money and hide it. We know he was going back to get the kid. And he was supposed to meet us a week later at the cabin outside of Beaver City. Instead, he gets himself killed. The kid was with him in the cabin when he was shot. I have a good hunch that Chick wouldn't give himself up without telling Tad where the money was. You think the kid's got it? No, but I think he knows where it is. I'm going back to town tonight. I'm going to have a talk with him anyway. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. And if you don't want to talk, get tough with him. I can handle Tad. Don't worry about that. That night, just before he went to bed, Tad made a final tour of the kennels. He was just about to return to the cabin when Bud Sterling stepped out of the shadows. Hello there, Tad. Who, who is it? Bud. Bud, I've been waiting for you. Oh, is that so? Yes, I didn't know how to find you. I didn't even know how to try. But I made Chick a promise just before he gave himself up. A uh, promise? That I'd show you where he'd hidden the money. Good. Your brother was a square guy, Ted. I know he was. You just tell me and I'll go and get it. I can't do that, but I can lead you there. It's in the woods near the cabin where Chick was shot. All right, then. Come on. I'm ready. No, wait a minute. We're short on food. Can you bring some with you? Oh, Tom's still up. He'd ask a lot of questions, but... But if I waited until he went to sleep... Yeah, that's it. Look, I'll draw you a map. Now, Bull and I are camped in the hills. It isn't far. You meet us just as soon as you can. I'll be there, bud. You can depend on it. We'll continue our story in just a moment. One, two, three, four, what are we for? Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat, of course. Yes, the whole family goes for these famous ready-to-serve breakfast cereals. And why? Because they're shot from guns. Both Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are shot from guns. Yes, sir. Huge guns are loaded with premium grains of wheat or rice. Then... These choice king-size kernels are actually exploded up to eight times normal size. That makes them bigger and better tasting. Makes Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice crisp and tender as nuts in November. They're shot through and through with bang-up nut-like flavor, too. Just take a big luscious spoonful, rich with milk or cream, and topped with your favorite fruit. Ah, oh, what a mouth-watering treat. And the best part of it is they're so nourishing, so good for you. Both delicious kinds furnish added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. So treat yourself to delicious, nourishing Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Start tomorrow morning. <laughs> Now, 
to continue our story. When Bud returned to the shack in the draw, he and Bull began to pack their few belongings preparatory to hitting the trail. Too bad the kid couldn't just tell you where the money was. It's better to have him with us. We'll just have to get rid of him afterwards. What do you mean by that? Guess what I said. It's going to be tough enough getting out of the territory without having a kid on our hands. Bull, the kid comes with us. Why, you're nuts. I'm telling you. Many's the time, Chick said to me. If anything happens, Bud, I want you to take care of the kid. I promised. Chick's played square with us, and I'm not going to double-cross him just because he's dead. Hey, uh, the kid wants Chick's share of the money, is that it? You got any other ideas? I might have. Such as? I can explain them better if you put your hands up. Oh. Up with them. Well? The kid don't get any of that money, see? You don't like that, do you? No. Maybe you figure I'm making some trouble. Well, we can talk it over, Bull. Tad doesn't need much. Oh, no. You want to make trouble, so why should I split with anybody? Bull, start walking, bud. Outside and up to the top of the draw. You wouldn't get moving. It was long after midnight when Tad reached the shack. Bull opened the door. Come on in. Oh, Bull. I'll take off my snowshoes first. Did uh, anybody see you leave town? No, Tom didn't wake up. and It's snowing so hard. Well, well nobody could follow me. You uh, ready to travel? Sure. I'll be packed in a minute. Are we leaving tonight? Why not? Well, the storm's getting worse. Well, we got a long way to go. We better get clear of Dawson while it's still dark. Yeah, I guess so. Whoa, well, where's Bud? Uh, he won't be coming with it. He won't? You heard me. But he's got to, Bull. That was part of my promise to Chick. You both had to be with me when I showed you where the money was. Yeah? Well, Bud had some business to attend to. He's going to meet us outside Beaver City. Oh, I guess that's all right. But, but Bull... Yeah, now what? He forgot his knife. They're on the table. Oh, that's mine. Oh, it's Bud's. He always used to brag about how good it was. I want it from him on a bet. Now, don't ask so many questions. <laughs> all right, come on. I'm all set. Let's go. Sergeant Preston and King were in 40 Mile that night, and they waited for the storm to stop before they started back for Dawson the following day. When they reached there, there was a message for the sergeant at the Northwest Mounted Headquarters. From Tom Gray, King. Urgent. We got right over there. And so, a few minutes later, the sergeant heard the news. He slipped away in the middle of the night, took some food and a few clothes. That's all. There was nothing leading up to it? No reason you can think of? No. To tell the truth, I was beginning to feel a little encouraged. Oh. I thought he was beginning to like me and to accept this as his home. You noticed him talking to any strangers? No. I've been on the lookout for something like that. Well, we'll try to find him, Tom. I've tried already. There's no one better at following a trail than old Bess. Not even King. I had her out first thing this morning. The storm was too bad. They showed up finally. I'm sure of that. The man who robbed the bank with his brother? Yes. King, you and I are going to Beaver City, boy. Well, I hope you find him, Sergeant. He's a good boy. Whatever he's done, whatever he's doing that's wrong is... Well, it's because he's still loyal to his brother. I can't blame him for that. I can't either, Tom. We'll do our best to bring him back. Let's go, King. The Sergeant and King reached Beaver City the following night. And then, for the next two days, with Corporal Downey, they made a systematic search of the forest surrounding the town. There was no sign of Tad. On the evening of the second day, King burrowed in the snow and went to sleep with the other dogs in the run back of the inn. He awoke at 12 o'clock. The night was quiet, and the sky was bright with the northern lights. <laughs> King stood up and shook himself. Then he trotted back and forth for several minutes. There was no explanation for the compulsion that gripped him. Suddenly, he whirled, ran the full length of the run at top speed, and leaped for the top of the fence. He scrambled over and dropped to the ground on the other side. Then he ran through the sleeping town and out into the forest. Two miles away, Tad and Bull were sitting close to their campfire. We're going to turn in after we eat, aren't we? No. But we're pretty close to town now. The money's closer, isn't it? But we've got to wait for Bud. Where are we supposed to meet him? He should have been here by now. We can't wait any longer for him. We haven't waited at all. It's too dangerous. 
We'll get the money and you can catch up with us later. No, that isn't the way chicks say. I'm giving the orders. I won't show you where it is. Yes, you will. Oh, pull, pull my arm. Let, let go. It's time you got things straight, kid. But won't be showing up here at all. He's dead. Dead? Yeah. I killed him. I shot him. And you get the same treatment if you don't do just what I say. You're going to show me where that money is tonight. If I do, what's, what's to stop you from killing me afterwards? Nothing. And there's nothing to stop me right now. Then you won't get the money. You do what I say and you'll live. Try to get away, try any tricks and... Oh, what's that? King was standing just inside the circle of light cast by the campfire. King! A wolf! My rifle! No, don't shoot him! It isn't a wolf! Don't. Get out of the way. I won't. Let go of that barrel. I'll shoot right through you. Go ahead. I don't care. But I won't let you shoot him. Why, you miserable little whelp. Oh. Dog, huh? But as Bull leveled the rifle, King was off and away. The bullet grazed his flank. He had reached the cover of the trees before Bull could fire again. The great dog ran as he had never run before. And when he reached the trail, he shot forward like a silver arrow. Ten minutes later, he was throwing himself against the door of the inn. The landlord opened the door. King, what is it? Oh, hey, King, come The dog here. shot past him through the inn's lounge and down the corridor leading to the sergeant's bedroom. What's wrong, King? He came charging in like something possessed, Sergeant. Tell Jim to get dressed in a hurry. I think he's found Tad. Right, Sergeant. All right, boy, I'll be ready in a minute. The sergeant and Corporal Downey followed King out of town at a run. A mile down the trail, King stopped and lifted his nose into the breeze. Now what, boy? Not far from the cabin where Chick was captured. King moved into the forest, but slowly now. Come on, Jim. I'm with you, Sergeant. The two men followed the dog. At the edge of a clearing <laughs> half a mile away, Tad was climbing down from a tree. It was hard work because of the canvas bag in one hand, but at last he dropped to the ground. <laughs> Here it is. Good. Bull leaned his rifle against the tree to take the bag. Hey, let's see. Yeah, yeah, it's all here. Must be close to 20,000. 20,000. As the man counted the money, the boy edged closer to the rifle. He reached out slowly. His hand grasped the barrel. The rifle was heavy, but he managed to point it at Bull. Put your hands up, Bull. Why, you... Keep back. I'll shoot if I have to. <laughs> I mean, I don't want the money. You can have it all. Just get out of here. Go on. I'll take that rifle first. Oh. With one hand, Bull knocked the rifle out of Tad's grasp. Oh. With the other, he knocked him sprawling into the snow. Now I'll finish up this business. And a bullet's the best way to do it. Bull reached to pick up the rifle. His hand was on the stock. Wait, when a silvery ball of fury hit him hard and knocked him to the ground. It was King. But for a man of his tremendous bulk, Bull could move fast. He knocked King off his back and sprang to his feet in time to face the sergeant. I'll take care of him, King. Just guard the rifle. There's no man alive who can handle me with his fists. The sergeant was half out of his parka. Bull's right crashed against his jaw and knocked him to the ground. Bull rushed forward to jump on the sergeant. But the sergeant was too fast. He managed to free himself of his parka and leap aside. Why, you... Bull's rush was met with an uppercut. No. Bull lashed back, and the two men stood toe-to-toe, -to -toe, slugging it out. Tad crawled away and ran to Corporal Downey's side. Why did you do something? Why did you help the sergeant? Uh, he doesn't want any help. Bull's too big for him. He's too strong. Why did you use your gun? The sergeant saw him hit you, Tad. He didn't like it. He, he's fighting Bull for me? That's right. And King. It was King who brought you here. You're right again. You've got to save him. Watch, Dad. Watch. There was no doubt Bull was the stronger man, but the sergeant was quicker and in better condition. Time and again, Bull missed, and the sergeant countered. I'll kill you. Once again, the sergeant ducked, and then, seeming to throw caution to the winds, he waded in. His right and left flashed like pistons, and for the first time, Bull was forced to give ground. The sergeant seemed to be charged with superhuman energy. Step by step, Bull was driven across the clearing. Now his breath came in deep, heaving sighs. His massive arms were no longer striking out. And when a final right crashed through his defenses and connected squarely with his chin, he dropped to the ground and hid his face in the snow. Well, you had enough? You're under arrest in the name of the Queen. A few days later, in the draw outside Dawson... King led the sergeant and Tad to a pile of rocks. The sergeant only had to lift one of them. Is it... You'll have to look at him, Tad. Yes, uh, that's Bud. He was better than Bull, but... But what, Tad? 
But even so, he was wrong. And so was Chick. He was good to me, but but he was wrong. If only... If only what, Tad? If only he could have realized that, that men like you don't want to be our enemies. That you want to be our friends. And that it isn't any fun to keep running away and to be afraid all the time. That you've got to obey the law if, if you want to live like other people and, and have a home and be happy. Yes, it's too bad Chick never found that out. But somehow, wherever he is, I think he's glad you have. Sergeant, can, can we go home now? To Tom's? Is it Tom's place you're calling home? Yes, Sergeant. Tom's been as kind to me as any father could be. And I haven't been square with him. I want to prove to him I can be different. The, the kind of boy he, he wants me to be. You will, Tad. I'm sure of it. Well, King, this case is closed. <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Monday's adventure. Up, 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 up to eight times normal size. Yes, that's what happens to Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice because they're shot from guns. That's why these choice, flavor-rich premium grains are so crisp and tender. They're shot through and through with swell, nut-like flavor, too. And as Mother knows, wheat or rice shot from guns makes a deluxe family breakfast that's economical, that's easy to fix as falling off a log. Just pour out a bowlful and add some fruit and milk or cream. And yummy, you're back for more. Just try them. Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat in the big red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. They're never sold in bags or bulk. Listen Monday, when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the King Emperor. When a crippled orphan boy, Frankie Warren, acquired a big St. Bernard dog, I was very happy for both their sakes, because they soon grew mighty fond of each other. I was a lot less happy when I learned the dog had been stolen, and I'd have to take him away from Frankie. The situation led to plenty of excitement, and before it was over... I found myself facing the guns of two ruthless criminals. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Monday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from guns. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Remember, Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.